Hello everybody. The goal of this course is to reach a perspective of the work inspections we should follow during the construction process in order to get the quality in building. This is a summary of the course, but today's topic is going to be focusing on the retaining walls, specifically in a small videos, a short videos that will show you a general overall of this unit. I would like to show you the main activities we have to check during each unit. The excavation is the first activity and sometimes, as uh, you know, we should match the activity of the excavation at the time we are making the retaining walls. Depending on the characteristics of the soil, it could be very easy, like this mood, very not compacity soil. This digging machine is extracting directly and just moving to the track and uh, ready to be removed from our work site. In some cases, the excavation is not directly done. We need to do it by pieces. Remind that sometimes the retaining wall is built from top to down. We make the first ring, we leave the anchor bolts, and then it's time to excavate, to die out all the land with this digging machine and carry it on the track. This is the time and the track is completely with the load ready to go out from the work site. In some specific cases, we are also making the whole surface of the retaining wall. So it's, uh, the subsoil is okay, is stronger enough to support the loads and we can excavate it continuously. But a small digging machine and a big digging machine is making it by pieces and the whole surface. In all cases, we have to make it from this part, this small part, the last unit of land we are keeping in this construction. So, this excavation is directly and we don't need to uh, keep any piece of land to support the um, subsoil because the resistance led to us to do it in a whole unit. After to make all the excavations, we are ready to move outside just to remove by the tracks the land. Take care about our mind the maximum slope or our exit as access or exit ramps because if not the lorry with this load in its back will be not able to go outside and move and carry the load of the excavation land. When all excavation is finished right now it's time to start with the retaining wall. The retaining wall need the reinforcement and the reinforcement sometimes came from the factory to our work site and it's made by cases, by net and we can just join it, sew it or just tie it on the place but in some cases we fix the bars directly. In this video you can see how this is a retaining wall with only one face from work and the workers are fixing, are just um, tying and sewing each bar of the reinforcement. In this case, we have uh, the, the possibility to fix it directly because uh, the position and the shape of the retaining wall is completely straight. So it led to us to fix and tie all the bars with the same distance and the specification of the project directly in the position. And we don't need to bring from the factory with a casing or another kind of net. After the reinforcement, we are ready to concrete the retaining wall. But before to pour in the concrete, we have to make two tests. One of that is the consistency test. This test is very, very good and is used to be uh, done in the, in the work site. One personal well prepared from a notified body is filling up this uh, test cone. The cone is a standard cone with the specific dimension, size and a kind of a steel which is a, st a standard um, assessment that will give to us the result of the consistency of its concrete we are going to use in our element. We have to fill it up the, co the cone with the concrete and fix a little bit with this bar, it's a stride, very thin bar, and then after to fix it, you close it and you add a little bit more until it's completely full. When the, con uh, the cone is finished and is full, it's time to take it out and the worker just move, remove to the surface, just stripe it out and leave it close to our quantity of concrete. Then we leave it together, we fix the bar as a horizontal bar and now it's time to make the measurement. 
And the standard size of the measurement we give to us the result of a concrete from a very dry or very liquid concrete depending on the specifications of the project. In this case we have right 8 cm which is very nice, very friendly, very useful for a vertical element as a retaining wall. After the consistence test we have to make the concrete test of the resistance. In this case the laboratory, a notified body, has to come to our work. Yes, take the concrete from the site and I will recommend to you to take the concrete directly after the pipe. If you are making it with a trimmy, you can take it directly, but if you are piping the concrete, the properties could change. So I recommend to you to take it after to pipe it and take it to fill it up the test tubes. The test tubes once more have a standard shape, a standard size, and a standard dimension that will have a standard results and led to us to be uh, in the position to accept or reject the concrete we are going to use in the retaining wall. This is the test tube. After to fill it up, we close the surface and we take out the excess of concrete and we create a horizontal surface where the identification is going to be located. You can see the quantity of the test tubes depending on the project management in each case. Then we fix this piece of uh, cloth. This is uh, only to keep the, the humidity, the moisturizing in our test tubes. Then we fix the identification about where is this concrete situated in our, in, our, in our building, right? So are we in the third floor, in the third level? Are we in the column number 34, second level? It has to be identified to know um, exactly in case of failure or in case of a bad result where the damage is located. Then we put on a kind of cap in the border of the test tube. This is this plastic, it's only to keep the temperature. It's very relevant to keep the test tubes in the work only maximum two days, 48 hours, and keep it from the shadow or very wind uh, extreme uh, weather conditions. Then, when we are pouring the concrete, it's time to vibrate. The vibration is very important. It's a very simple activity, but it's very important because if you vibrate too much, you can separate the cement from each aggregate. But if you vibrate little, if you vibrate too less or little quantity, you can have the opposite result. You can have the same holes because the cement don't arrive to cover all the aggregates. When the, co the concrete and the pouring is finished and its vibration, we should follow the, the table and the mandatory specifications about the time we have to keep the form work. When everything is okay and is, is, is right following the standards, we are uh, able to start with the stripping. In the stripping, we have to be very careful and just be sure the forms had in the past this prime uh, resin to avoid the uh, easy adherency or just to take it, uh, remove it very easily. After to fix the, the, all the strips, and all the elements, we are ready just to move it with a crane because the shape, the size and the dimension of this formwork is too big and it's not possible to do it by hands. So after to fix all the elements, the crane is going to remove the, the, the formwork and our retaining wall will be able and ready for the final check. So we can see here in the video how right now the crane is going to remove the foam work stripping is going to be finished. Depending on the frame and the resin you have fixed before its position, then it's going to be more easy or less if it is not completely. You can see how the marks are making you the answer about the quantity of prime it was before to be fixed. Depending on the characteristics of the retaining wall, of course, we will make the waterproofing or not. So waterproofing should be like a moisturizing bituminous area and then the sheets that will keep it in the wood conditions and will protect the retaining walls from the humidity and the water affection. And finally, when we are making the final verifications before 
to start the sequence and the other activities, we should think about to fix and to fill it up these small holes in the tubes we are going to have. In the place where the pins were fixing and fastening the foam walls, we have to fill it up and be sure everything is going to be perfect, because if not, we will have a direct entry of the water. Pathology sometimes happens when it is not well fixed and we can have the sheet not fixed to the retaining wall. So right now we have a waterproof sheet, but it's not working and we are going to have a pathology in our building. Thank you very much for your attention. Oh, no can see.